Sounds so good. Psalm chapter 9 from verse 10 says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may shew forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. May God have blessing to his word. Just pray as we want to welcome the Holy Spirit tonight. 
God's blessings upon our service tonight. Almighty God, we are conscious of you, your presence among your people, O oh God, come. We live in such a dreadful hour, Lord, but it's also a very glorious hour. For in this very time, Lord, you have, Lord, you have uh, promised a mighty visitation amongst your people, O oh God. We are aware of your grace upon our lives, O oh God, that we can see this day. Lord, we are alive because of you tonight. Lord, we are alive in your presence, Father. We pray, O oh God, that this presence would come down, Lord, as we sing praises to your name, Lord. We make room for you here tonight. Lord, that you would come and fill this room with your august being, O oh God. Anoint us, every fiber of our being tonight, as we offer it all to you, Lord, as living sacrifices of praise. May you be pleased with our worship, Lord. Lord, may you come down in a special way and bless us, Lord. Bless your servant, Lord, as he prepares himself to be used of you tonight, Lord Father, to speak the word of God. Lord, may your spirit be so pleased tonight to come and dwell amongst your people, Lord Father. Lord, may lives be changed, Lord, by the word of God as it goes forth. May the spirit of God come behind it. Make it alive by many infallible proofs. May your Holy Spirit be evident amongst your people. Pour out your anointing. Bless, seal, deliver, and, and baptize, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. We pray and ask these things in your precious name. Bless those who are hooked up to us tonight. May they receive a portion also. We'll be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn around, greet your brother, greet your sister. Amen. Amen. We're traveling on the right road. Oh, and we're traveling on the right road. And there is one way to the city of God. Traveling on the right road. Oh, yes, we are traveling on the right road. Oh, we are traveling on the right road. Oh, and there's one way to the city of God. Traveling on the right road. Oh, yes, we are traveling on the right road. Oh, we are traveling on the right road. And there is one way to the city of God. Traveling on the right road. Oh, yes, we are traveling on the right road. Oh, we are traveling on the right road. And there is one way to the city of God. Travel. Oh, can we take it up? Oh, we are traveling on the right road. Oh, we are traveling on. Traveling, traveling on the right road. 
God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, send your spirit tonight. Send out your power tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Give him a shout. Give him a praise. Lift him up. Just begin to thank him. Begin to praise him. for that song, I love him because he first loved me. Amen. Do you feel that way tonight? Amen. We want to fall in love with Jesus tonight. Let's lift our hands and just think about him as we sing this song. I love him. Oh, I love him. He calls Let's give him glory for a few moments. 
of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all Let's praise him right now this morning. Father, we praise you. We bless you. You are worthy. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your spirit, Father. Come down among us in a special way. We bless you, Jesus. Have the preeminence among us. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you that we can be called your sons. We thank you for the love that you have bestowed upon us, that we can be called the sons of God. We pray you come and open up your word to us tonight. Confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And thanks again for being here tonight. And if I have your Bibles, I'd like to turn to 1 John chapter 1. We're going to read 5 to 10. 1 John chapter 2, 9 11, Revelation 5, 1 to 7. So good to be here tonight. See all of you out. God bless you. Welcome. And uh, from 1 John 1, verse 5. This then is a message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. In him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. The cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the deal. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And we go to chapter 2 and reason from verse 9. It reads, He that saith he is in the light, and hated his brother, is in darkness, even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hated his brother is in darkness and walk it in darkness, and know it not whither he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Revelation chapter 5, reading from verse 1, And I saw in the right hand of him the sudden the throne, a book written within, on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book, and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, you know, to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. And you know, to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the land of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, and had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Praise God. God bless you. you may have your seat. May God bless this reading of his word. Always oh, good to be here tonight. I want to thank God for all the services that has gone on uh, previous to this one. And we just thank God for the gifts and the blessing that has blessed us by the word. So tonight I have a, a title. Uh, and um, well, Stephen uh, really was blessed with 
a special way and I got some stuff from it. And I, I told him, and, and I have some, uh, something that he, he said, but I want to title this this tonight, This Book of Redemption Was Given to Make Sons and Daughters Again. Amen. You hear about the book and the book of redemption and the seven seals, but there's an object that this book has. And the purpose of this book is to make sons and daughters again. The book, purpose of the book is not for argument, is not for debate, is not for doctrinal differences. The object of God is to make sons and daughters of God by this book or through this book. Now, the Pentecostals couldn't come true because they rejected the word, because they rejected the prophet. So they didn't have the word to get the seed to become the word because the word was yet to come. The Pentecostal was the birth. If they had received the message, which was the word, they could become sons in the true sense of sons. So this message is the key to our sonship and our inheritance and our godship. Praise the Lord. Now, when God made man, he made him dust. He made this a little certain compartment in the man for his throne, his control tower. God wants to lead man, but man wants to lead himself. Therefore, there's a war constantly. Take the quote that's first even read. The man wants to go after what he sees with his eyes, and there's where he's deceived. So in other words, your five senses is lying to you because your five senses is declaring what your eyes taste, smell, all those things, but your faith comes by the word. And faith makes you see God because faith connects with the word. You can only get faith by hearing the word. So when your word is preached to you, faith is activated to begin to begin to get a glimpse of what God sees and how God sees it. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. So watch, that is where Satan deceived Eve by what she could see. The fruit was pleasant to the eye. It was death to the soul. So it is tonight, God wants to lead man, so he made himself a little control tower in the midst of his heart. So that man would be led by the Spirit of God. Getting off of his own leading is what separated him from his fellowship. And, where, and that is where we stand tonight. All those who are led by such things, but the scripture said, sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. Not by your emotions. Not by your feelings. Not by your imagination. Sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. I feel and I feel and I feel you feel nothing. Forget your feeling. What did God say? You have to be led by the Spirit of God. Isn't that right? Now watch it here now. Watch. And you notice a man or a woman that tries to walk after the things of the world, they can never please God. But a man and woman that will not look to the things of the world and just go according to the leading of the Spirit, they are usually in the will of God. So the Spirit's leading, and remember, the Spirit will not lead you contrary to the Word. Then you know it's not the Holy Spirit, right? Praise God. So Satan took the eye, a man's head, to control him by his head. Because the eye have plenty of touch points. You see coffee, you see cake, you want to eat cake, you see a roti shop, you want roti, you see this one, hey, hello, and you see a phone and WhatsApp, your eye, your eye, eye and head, eye and head, what your eye see. Every day is all color, is all connections, and Satan take the head, but there's something deep that God puts that in your heart. That's why you can't even explain you, why are you still connected to this gospel. You can't even explain why you keep holding on. Why something in you keep believing? It's not you. It is something in you. Something you can't explain. That's how you're supposed to know it's God. It's something you cannot explain. God put that in you. Not your mother, not your father, not your uncle, not your aunt, not your grandmother, not your great-grandmother. God put that inside of you. Hallelujah. That's his gene. That's his germ. That's his seed. That's why Jesus could confidently say, no man could come to me except my father. Draw him. And all that the Father had given me will come. Jesus had confidence because he knew once God put it in you, it got to come. It got to respond. Where there's a deep, deep calling, they got to have a deep, deep respond. God knew what he put inside of you. He knew what will activate you. He knew what will draw you. He knew what will call you. Hallelujah. Let's go. Man is always trying to achieve something by his head. He's supposed to achieve but by his heart. That's why your head thinking one thing but your heart says something else. Like, you know, you, you meet somebody and, you, and, you, and, and you know, they, 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 they say certain things about that and that's all of a sudden your heart, a red flag go up. Something just, 
I can't explain, but something. All of a sudden, it's like something. I ain't clicking with that person, you know. Like something fishy, something not. You can't explain it, you know, but the vibes. That's the heart saying, no deal. So the heart, that's the control tower when God controls him and directs his thoughts, directs his walks, directs his emotions. Sometimes I get so happy, I just have to let loose. If I look around and see somebody then, I got my eyes on people then, but God helped me to keep my eyes closed. I want to be led by the Spirit of God that the flesh will have nothing to do into it. We find that this man is controlled by a control tower, and that tower makes him what he is. It moves him. So the real you is not the head so much. That head have intentions. Good intentions go straight to hell. But the heart is the real you. That's the real you. Your head getting fight. Your head go. Oh, the, a lot of problems up here. A lot of battles up here. A lot of confusion up here. But deep down, what you are is as a man thinking in that. So we see what you are here in your heart. That's that's you. And the tower makes him what he is. It moves him. He lives by it. It's his emotions. He lives by it. Now, why, where they are waiting on the spirit to know what to say and okay, I'll go. God knows what he's doing as long as he's leading. You see, you must always go by the spirit and the spirit will always agree with the word. Now, if the spirit leads you contrary to the word, then it's not the spirit of God. If the Holy Spirit is leading you, it will say Jesus Christ is him yesterday, today, and forever. Now, he said all these strange voices in the world of this social gospel belongs to church. And that has not, has, and why hasn't it done something? It's done nothing but confuse the people. What we need tonight is a unified church filled with the Holy Ghost and power from on high, led by the Spirit of the living God on the control tower that, would, that won't say, listen, listen, that won't say, because I'm a Baptist and he's a Methodist, I'll have nothing to do with him. But that is what they say in the message. Not saying these exact words. Their life and behavior speaks that. I am better than them because my pastor has more revelation than his pastor, or we have more it, whatever it's supposed to be in our church than that other church, which is foolishness. And the believers are deceived by believing that crap. We read a scripture, if you say you're walking in the light and hate your brother, you are a liar. Because the confession, the confession is that as we confess our sins, we have fellowship with him. The blood of Jesus cleanses us, not cleanses them, us, you included. And then we can have fellowship one with another. So what else could affect fellowship? It's the devil himself affecting fellowship. Because God loves fellowship. That is why he put man on the earth. To have fellowship with man. Oh, give the Lord some praises. He was lonesome as Elohim. That is why he become Jehovah. Oh, give the Lord a shout in the house. Hallelujah. That's why he created little ones. That he could come in the cool of the evening and fellowship with Adam. Adam not talking to him. Adam not fellowshipping with him. Adam not fellowshipping with the next Adam. That is foolishness. God don't want nothing like that. God go crash that party. Oh, give the Lord a shout in the house. Glory to God. That's the same denominational barriers that come back in the message. But God go bust on that party. Hallelujah. God go bust. God go bust men right out the pulpit. Oh, give the Lord some praises. There's going to be a revival. A seven ton of revival. It have a name for that revival. A revival of the just. Oh, give the Lord praise God. And a bride is the one who is justified. As if she never did it in the first place. Oh, give the Lord a shout. We coming back to perfection. That perfection. Glory to God, we're going back to Eden, brother. Hallelujah! So watch this. Watch this. Led by the Spirit of the living God. On the control tower that won't say, because I'm a Baptist and he's a Methodist, I have nothing to do with him. Here we go. Are you ready? A real, true Spirit of God will recognize his brother or sister. I don't care what kind of brand he is wearing. In other words, you are a son and your daughter and the rest of the message will have to deal with that. Whether they see you so or not, they have to deal with that because you ain't going nowhere. And they can't out you. 
Oh, glory. They can't put out your light. They can't take your name out of the book. Oh, glory to God. They have to put up or shut up. Oh, give the Lord a praise in the house tonight. Oh, glory to God. We ain't going nowhere. We staying right here and overcoming. We staying right here and represent Jesus Christ. Give the Lord some praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We need the leadership of the Holy Spirit walking after the unseen. The way that God leads us. The things we see are temporal. The things that we do not see are eternal. Matthew 25 verse 31 says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep on the right hand, the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you give me meat. I was thirsty, and you give me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. Naked, you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and he come unto me, and he come unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, give thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? When saw we sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. This love your brother is more than the paper, you know. This love your brother is more than talk, you know. This has to do with the kingdom here and the kingdom to come. Oh, give the Lord some praises. Hallelujah. Here we go. Verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and ye give me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye give me no drink. I was a stranger, you took me not in. Naked, you clothed me, you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, Lord, when saw we hungered and thirst and strange and naked, sick in prison, did not minister to thee, then he shall answer very answer to you, inasmuch as you did not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. If you love God, you will love your brother. If you love God, you love your sister. If you love God, you will treat one another right. And the message world, but the Kangali needs to get that. Oh, give the Lord some praises. This is no message talk and seals and, and, and vials and plagues and woes. And between the six seals and the seventh seal and the sixth vial and the seventh vial and the first one and the second woe. They're not all that kind of talk. This is a life. This is the thunder. That does shake the devil. It have, it have other thunders that don't shake. Devil laughing at that. But this one is what does shake the devil. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Oh, glory to God. This book was given to make sons of God. After 50 plus years, we have to begin to see what sons of God begin to look like. Oh, God, good Lord, get, help me, Jesus. After all these years, we have to begin to see. Eh, eh. When God created monkey and goat and cow and, 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 and whale and, and, and all that, he, he, there was none like him. He said, let us make man in our image and like this. It has to resemble something. Oh, glory to God. When Moses was looking to, uh, Lord, I want to see you in your past. He saw the back part of a man. Uh, an image must reflect something. Oh, give the Lord a shout. It can't reflect nothing. Oh, it must reflect something. After all these years, we have to see some kind of formation. Hallelujah. A woman says she's pregnant. And she's going for ultrasound. And they see nothing. I'm waiting for it, aren't they? It's burger, you know. It's burger or some kind of some other thing she eats, you know. In other words, you have to see a form. You have to see a shape. And after all these years, you have to begin to see a form, a shape. And it has to be in the stature of a perfect 
man. It has to be now a form that reflects God's image and likeness. It can't reflect you. It can't reflect your bad behavior. It can't reflect your temper and your attitude and your, your vex and you're angry and you're upset and you're hateful and you're miserable. You're miserable for 40 years. How long have you been miserable for? Like you. But God wants to birth it from above. But the Branham. Notice specifically the words of Matthew 25, 31 to 46. He's referring to the scripture we just read. It does not say that a shepherd is literally separating sheep from goats. But it is as a shepherd dividing sheep from goats. These are not sheep in this particular area of time, which is white throne judgment. The sheep are already in his fold. They heard his voice, the word, and they followed him. They already have eternal life and cannot come into judgment. But these, who he's talking about here now, do not have eternal life. They are in the judgment. They are allowed to go into eternal life, but upon what grounds do they enter into life eternal? Certainly not upon the fact that they already have his life, as does the bride, but they receive it because they were kind to his brethren. They are not his brethren that would make them joint heirs with Jesus. They are not heirs to anything but life. They share no throne with him. Their names must have been in the book of life and not removed. But because of their love of the people of God, they are recognized and saved. Take that devil. Oh glory to God. Did you get that? There are people that are going to love the brethren. And because of their love for the people of God, they will be recognized and saved. God said so. Oh, give the Lord some praises. Give the Lord a shout in the house. Glory. Let's go. No doubt, these served and help the children of God. Perhaps like Nicodemus and Gamaliel, they stood for the children in a time of trouble. It may seem to smack of restoration, watch carefully now, for the wicked are not restored, but are turned into the lake of fire. The names of many of those destroyed were in the book of life also, but they were blotted out because they failed to honor the people of God who were living manifested word living epistles for their day. And they fail to honor that. Bad behavior. Wicked people. And I go call on them spirits. I was telling Anne Marie about many times we don't see what God see, you know. When God see wicked, I was telling about the man with the talent. When the man come back and this one have five, produce five, this one have ten, produce ten, this one have one, he bury it. Well, you know where he address him? Wicked servant, you know, not you know, boy, you, you miss him back, you know, you know, what I mean, you should have put it in the bank. All right, no, not that, you know, wicked. Amen. Who said that? God said that. That's how God's seeing it. Amen. Amen. It's in John 1. Let's go. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. In him was life, the life was the light of men, the light shone into the darkness, darkness comprehended or not. Let's go. He was, oh, okay. all right. He came unto his own, verse 11, and he received him not. But as men and receive him, to them give he power to become. Amen. So we get a new word now. Yeah. That power has to be released for us to become Amen. the sons of God. Yeah. We are sons, fallen sons, but to become the sons of God, he's talking about a different level yeah. of sonship. He's talking about a real attribute son of his spirit manifesting what the father had or to be just like the father oh glory to god what we manifest now is what our fallen nature have we have car house land lights wherever man heart is science and whatnot technology and whatnot but god not in the technology business god in the translation business we have technology that they don't know god in the opening open prison bars god in the healing business conquering nature business god got a different level altogether isn't that right that we head back to Eden. Watch. As many as receive him, which is the word, 
To them give he power to become the sons of God. So becoming sons of God is not instant. It's, as Brother Stephen says, a process. It's a process to become sons of God. You're born and you become. You, he said, you make yourself a Christian. You just sit down. Because watch this. Power came to the Pentecost in 1906. But look how they are. They're still filthy as they were since back then. In other words, that power came, but they didn't have the word to make them sons. Or the word to, for them to be formed into sons. They didn't have that. That's right. That this day, they're still failing. Because they don't have the word. Because the word is what God used in the beginning. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. And in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word tonight is still God. Oh glory to God and the word tonight could transform you. If you want to receive it inwardly and willingly. Not outwardly and formally. Oh give the Lord some praises. Hallelujah. You receive that word inwardly and willingly. And watch that word go to work inside your heart. Glory to God. Remember the devil can't get inside the deal because the word is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Not the devil. The word is. Oh, glory to God. The devil can play with your mind, but he can't mess with that seed inside your heart. Give the Lord some praises tonight. Do you love him? Do you love the Lord tonight? Watch. As men receive him, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name continues, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. He's saying you'll be born of God. And the word, here we go, was made flesh. And dwelt among us. But Abraham. Like Abraham, could not see that son, no signs of pregnancy of Sarah, not even menstruation, periods, nothing. And yet God said so. All hopes, her womb was dead. His life was him was gone. The stream of his life had dried up. Her life had dried up within her. Yet he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving praise, knowing that God was able to perform anything he said he would. There is the way we got to believe that word today. Do you believe it like that? That God can't lie? There's going to be a revival. There'll be a super church, a super race. As we near the headstone, there'll be a power and the shout of the king will be in the camp. The car closes down before time. Are we not closing down ourselves? Oh, give the Lord some praises. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout. Did you hear that? They cannot close us down before time and we are not closing on ourselves. We're going to stay here till power come. We're going to stay here till Jesus come. We're going to stay here till the shout of the king is in the camp. We're going to stay here till the pillar of fire hanging on over the building. We're going to stay here till the clipper walk, the blind see the dead is red. We're going to stay right here until there's going to be a seven ton of revival. That's going to shake the whole nation. There'll be a short quick message. Oh, give the Lord a shout that will shake the whole nation. Oh, glory to God. What's it going to be? The comforter has come. Oh, hallelujah. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's the way we got to believe that word today. How is it going to be? Listen around you. How is it going to be? I don't know. God said it's going to be that way. And that's settled. There's going to be a bride in Trinidad. How is it going to be? I don't know. The walls go fall down. Praise God. How is it going to be? I don't know. The honey look like it won't stick, but it will stick. It will stick. Oh, glory to God, the bride. Oh, glory to God. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. A revelation of justification will come. That's the prophecy hanging over the bride. He, he preaches invisibly on the bride. He say, I want you to know where you're standing tonight. You stand justified. As if you never did that. You can't claim that in baby form. That's a revelation, you know. When you stand under that anointing, by the authority vested in me as a restored son, justified as if I never sin, Satan, you have to move right now. Listen, he running out, you know. You're walking out and he's running out, you know. Oh, glory to God, because you're standing in the Adamic position that it was before the fall. That is what Brother Branham did. He, listen, God didn't give Sister Hattie, you know. He said, you give that woman what she want. Oh, give the Lord a shout. Don't get me started tonight. Do you understand that? Because he was a God under God on the earth. God couldn't give Hattie. Brother Branham had to give Hattie. Before the doctor's hand touches my wife, the tumor going to go down. 
He was demonstrating what you have to move into. Oh, justify as you never did in the first place. You have been given power to bind the mamba, but be more sincere. The mamba going after the brethren. He didn't say that's up to them. They better get fit. And they're on their own. No. He, he knew the depth of sincerity wasn't for himself. The depth of sincerity was required that the believers were not being killed by this deadly mamba. And he bind it. And he said that you might know you couldn't bind it too. Oh, glory to God, because God wants you to know you have power to bind and you have power to unbind. And if you have bung with cancer, we can unbind it. Oh, give the Lord a shout in the house. Whatever it is that's binding you, give the Lord a shout in the house. Oh, glory to God. In the church of the living God tonight, there's the power to bind and unbind. Amen, by the punch. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Devil have your son bong, your wife bong, husband bong, this one bong, and God losing power to unbind those that are bong. Set the captive free to say house of hell give way to the name of Jesus Christ. That is not fables we're talking. That is not fables we're preaching. That is the word. You see Elohim spoke to that prophet and Elohim know what he said to that prophet. We're not saying our own thoughts. We're not saying what we dreamed last night. God spoke to that prophet and he know exactly what he said to that prophet. And if we believe just what the prophet said, it's got to come to pass. No devil can stop it from coming to pass. Oh glory to God. Hallelujah. It's got to come. The word spoken over you has to come to pass. Your family will be delivered. If you are to believe that. Listen, this is a hearty right two boys were snickering, you know. They was laughing, you know. They wasn't be paying for church service, you know. He said, I give them to you. Because he had the power to do so. Because God authorized him. You have to be authorized to have power. If you take power, that is dictatorship, brother George. That is when you point your crown on your head. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Who is this great unseen person? Who is this that Abraham seen in visions right at the last door? He was manifested in flesh before the sun came. God himself came to Abraham in the form of a man at the end time, manifested. He saw him in a little light one time. He saw him in vision. He heard his voice, many revelations. But just before the promised son, he saw him in the form of a man and talked to him, fed him meat and drink. Notice God himself failed in human flesh. This is a part of his way. This is the way he manifests himself to us. He manifests his eternal word, God, Jehovah made flesh, like in St. John 1. And this is how the prophet said it. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Then he said this. In the beginning was Elohim. And Elohim became the word. And the word was Elohim. And the word was made Elohim. It's the same thing just unfolded. Elohim, the thought, the word, the logos. The word made flesh. Then he went on to say this. Like the attribute, see it is God. Attribute is your thought. God in the beginning, the eternal. He was even God. He was eternal. He wasn't even God. God is an object of worship. He wasn't even that. He was Elohim, the eternal. But in him, here we go, was taught. Listen tonight. He wanted to become material. That is the crux of the matter here right now. The thoughts that he had in his mind, he wanted it to become material. What did he do? He spoke a word and the word materialized. And that is the whole picture from Genesis to Revelation. This word materializing. And the word was invisible until it became flesh. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. So God's purpose as Brother Stephen preached, was for you to become manifested. 
God purpose for you to become the word made flesh. It is nothing wrong. Let's go. I'm continuing. I'm reading. It is Elohim materializing so he can be touched and feel. And in the millennium, there is Elohim sitting on his throne with all his subjects around him. He predestinated before the foundation of the world. Give the Lord some praise. This is beautiful tonight. This is God Almighty. This is not your imagination now. This is revelation. This is the word. Praise God. And here is the bomb here now. He took the book out of the right hand of him and sat upon the throne. The owner, the original owner that had the book of redemption in his right hand. No angel, no angelic being, nothing else could take his place. And this bloody lamb walked out and took the book out of his hand. What was it, brother? This is the most sublime thing in the scripture, an act, not an angel. Not, nothing could do it, but the lamb come and took it from the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. God law is he's the one that holds it. God law required a kinsman redeemer. And the lamb came out boldly and said, I am their kinsman. I am their redeemer. I have come, I have made intercessions for them. And now I come to claim their rights for them. Amen. Amen. I come to claim their rights. So it's not Jesus dying on the cross. He died to get that book. He died to claim your rights. You couldn't claim it yourself. Oh, give the Lord some praises. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If, if, in that they had a right to everything that was lost in the fall and I've paid the price. So Jesus was saying, I paid the price to restore back to these people what they lost. You don't have to pay the price. It's already paid. He paid it at Calvary. He paid it at the cross that we can access these rights. But man, not by good works which we have done, but by his mercy. Hallelujah. And them elders throw off their crowns and dignity begin to get on the ground. No one could do it. He walks to the right hand of God and took the book out of his hand and claimed his rights. I have died for them. I am the kinsman redeemer. I am the mediator. My blood was shed. I have become man. I did this in order to get that church back again. Which church? The one I foresaw before the foundation of the world. I have purposed it. I spoke it would be there. Nobody could be able to take it. And I went down and done it myself. I am the kinsman. I become the kinsfolk. And he takes the book. Oh, give the Lord some praises tonight. Who is waiting there for me tonight? Who is the one, church, that is waiting there? What else could wait for you but the kinsman redeemer? He has the title deed to redemption. He has it in his hands. Meditation is done. Mediation is done. He has it in his hands. Now watch. Here we go. And this is a bomb here now. The title deed of redemption of all creation is in his hand. And he comes to claim it back to the human race. Not claim it back to angels. Here we go now. Claim it back to the human this is where I get inspiration from the title tonight. Claim it back to the human which it was given for to make sons and daughters again. The book, Brother Kangli. This book was so important. Oh, God have mercy. This book is what was given to make sons and daughters again. We're going back to Genesis. Let us make man. Hey! In the image and likeness of God. But Abraham came and revealed the image of God as faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godness, brotherly kindness. He bring the image of God back on the earth and said, this is it here. This is what was in the beginning. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And the prophet come and preach it as a statue of a perfect man. And put it in the seals and put some thunders all around it and let the ministers fight up with it. Oh, glory to God. Seven thunders, seven voices, seven virtues. Seven mysteries, seven anointings, seven spirits. You can't break it. It's unbreakable. Oh, glory to God. This book. Hallelujah. That's why when the lamb came, he came with the book. When the mighty angel came, he came with the book open. And what happened? Seven thunders throw their voices. What for? To get the bride. It's the only thing that is exclusive to the bride. Seven thunders are gathered right together. Seven thunders are show the bride how to repair. Seven thunders are going to get the bride only for the bride. The church members can keep all the books and tapes. Or get it and press play. Or give the Lord a shout. But them thunders go get that bride. Oh, glory to God. Seven voices to get you. Oh, seven thunders are seven voices. A thunder is the voice of God. And the voice of God coming to you by the word of God to make you a son and daughter of God. Oh God, have mercy. This has nothing to do with church membership and what church you go to and what church you join. That's what the preachers want that. Your fellowship here, that, that make you what that fellowship are here? You are headstone tabernacle. 
God called to be sons and daughters. Not to join church, sons and daughters. And that starts from the word coming into you to make you a son. Isn't that right? So watch. Claim it back, not to claim it back to the human, which it was given for to make sons and daughters of God again. To bring them back to the Garden of Eden. Oh, well, but I thought I was tired, but not now. <laughs> he gets to me a little bit of this thing here. He said, I'm getting too old to preach, but then I could see something. When I see something like that, I think I'm a young man. It does something to you. For I know this. Someone is waiting for me. Someone paid the price I couldn't pay. He did it for me, Charlie. He did it for you. He did it for the whole human race. And now he comes forth to claim his redemptive right. Claim it for who? Not for himself, for us. He is one of us. He's our kinsfolk. Oh my, he's my brother. He's my savior. He's my God. He's my kinsman redeemer. He's all. For what was I without him? What could I be without him? That one, Jesus met the requirement. Grace produced the person of Jesus Christ. And we find this book now, God stretched his tent, come from God to become man. He changed his strain from the Almighty to be a man, to take on the form of man so he could redeem, die to redeem man. The bride, in the Bible, in the book of Ruth, you read it, such a person was called a goel, G-O-E-L. It was called a goel. It was a person that could meet the requirement, and the goel must be able to do it. He must be willing to do it. He must be a kinsman next to kinsman. And God, the creator of spirit, here we go, became kinsfolks to us when he became man in order to take our sin upon him and pay the price. So he couldn't take our sin upon him in spirit form. He had to become one of us and take us as a human, as a kinsfolk. That's why the word became flesh. Here we go. Let's go down a little deeper now. There it is. There's the redeemer. Christ has redeemed us now. We are now redeemed, but he has not claimed his position yet. You might different with that. Just hold on a minute. He hasn't claimed it. If he took the book of redemption, everything that Adam had, everything that he lost, Christ redeemed back. So this is an unfolding revelation. Present tense redemption. God redeeming you day by day. Christ has redeemed you. It's already unfolded in his great mind. He already redeemed us, but he hasn't took possession yet. He cannot until the time appointed. And then will come the resurrection. And then the earth will be renewed again. And then he will take possession. He will possess it. When he comes to redeem us, he comes at the appointed time. We'll give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he hasn't claimed us as yet. But the spirit come to redeem our souls. Redeem our spirit. And then there's a fire baptism to redeem our body. Praise God. So we have to die out. And we have to have die out and faith could come out and virtue could come out and knowledge could come out. The death of a corner wheat. All these virtues have to be emanating through us. He said that God can see these things living in us. Oh, give the Lord some praises. So how that could be living and people behaving so badly? Something is wrong. He said the spirit of God can't behave in one man and misbehave in another man. Something is wrong. We're talking about the spirit. We're talking about the seals. We're talking about the unfolding of the word. It has to become flesh. Tangible. And then his favorite quote, you hear me quote it so much of the time. The ministry has reached its perfection when Christ is reproduced in natural. I've said that hundreds of times. Hallelujah. Let's say it again. The ministry. People think they're son of man, mini son of man. They think they're the prophet, next to the prophet, under the prophet. The man of the hour, nobody like them. They bring in mysteries, they unfold the word everywhere they come to them, and all the drama, all the pop popery they have. Hear the prophet say this the ministry comes to its perfection when Christ is reproduced in natural, not mysteries, not revelations, not teachings, not six hour sermon, and for our explanation, not that. When Christ is reproduced in the natural, so you want to tell me Christ is a man, he can help somebody? You see somebody clothed and you wouldn't get them clothes? You see somebody hungry and you wouldn't feed them? And you claim to what? Know the mystery that, that John himself is empty? 
You have a revelation that Christ, that the prophet didn't reveal? And the whole world has seen it so, and you've seen it so? And people still naked? People still hungry? The only charity they get in some, we call it, these people they give, um, them, them people who with the little thing to ring the bell. Salvation Army. People who people going to see Salvation Army to get ch charity. We call them fellas in the message mean like the devil. Satan had them in grip. If you say you have you walk in the light and hate your brother. Don't let me read it again. You lie. It's a big mystery. You know? Let me see it again. He that says he's a light. That, that what they claim, eh? Seven sea light. Seven thunder light. New name light. Um, unknown languages. It went into unknown language, unknown tongues. All that is light. You say you have unknown language and you know the other language. Well, I can't interpret. I, 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 I'm not into of tongues. You have the new name. You have light there too. He that says he's in light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He that loves his brother abides in the light. There's none occasion and stuff. And that is where they talk about Brother Branham. You couldn't know his enemy from his friends. That's what they say about Jesus. You couldn't know his enemy from his friends. When he tells Judas, wait, do it quickly. Them fellas talk, you go, you go for more bread. Jesus didn't say, Judas, wait, wait, do it quickly. Eh? And talking with that tone. And you say, but Judas is the crook, but he's the... They didn't know. When Judas come, he kissed Jesus. Yes, here comes the betrayal of that kid. Jesus didn't say, Jesus didn't say you're wicked. <laughs> I'm going to expose you tonight. Jesus, take the kiss and just say, Judas, that is... I eat with you. I eat with you. That's how you're coming. Friends, is a life, you know? He that hates his brother is in darkness. There's a church, the only, the whole church in darkness, a visionary church, the whole church in darkness, the only light is by the exit. Only light is by the exit. The whole church in darkness. And the people don't know, and the preacher don't know. And the preacher, normal, normal, normal. But the whole church under darkness. Who is to tell them? Not me, I ain't called to do that. They'll kill me. Okay. So here's this part now. Fellowship. God. You take a little more? Yeah. A few more, a few more again. I learned pages on page seven. We're going good. God. Wanting to fellowship with man, always wanted to do it. The Old Testament, all of it was full of shed blood. Without the shedding of blood, no mention of sin. So God Himself cannot deal with all this blood thing, because man fell. It has to have an atonement. We can't explain that, but that is how God sees it, because He knows He's coming to play the blood price to, to remove sin completely. But in the meantime, He's operating under that temporary covenant of the blood of bulls and goats. He's going to accept that and work with that because he has to come down in the appointed time to be made flesh to pay the price. That he can enter once forever and kill that dead and free us from guilt and shame and the past. We don't have to go once a year hoping that God forgive us, right? Old Testament. Now what? Here we go. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And when there's no remission of sin, there's no fellowship. So sin breaks fellowship. So if fellowship is broken, sin is at the door. Sin somewhere near. If the fellowship of the brethren is broken, sin behind the pulpit then. Sin in the congregation then. Sin in the group then. Sin somewhere, Brother Kangley, because sin affects fellowship. Because the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin and we have fellowship one with another. So if fellowship is not there one with another, something is wrong somewhere. It's not with God. It's not with the word. It's not with the blood. It's not with the message. Give the Lord some praises. Are you with me? All right. Let's go. Where there is no remission of sin, sin, there's no fellowship. You have got to get away from sin before you can have fellowship with God. 
Because God can't fellowship with sin. You are born a sinner, shape in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies, how can you ever do it? You might have just well quit right now to begin with. You can't do it within yourself, but there is one who died to bring you to fellowship, back not only to fellowship, but to relationship with God, to make you a son and daughter of God. So it's more than fellowship God wants to bring you into, want to, want to bring you into a relationship. He died for that purpose, come here and prove himself Emmanuel, omnipotent, Praise God. And when omnipotence speaks, the miraculous happen. Now let's go. Quickly now. Watch the fellowship. How Adam and Eve, they had turned away from God because of sin had separated them from that wonderful, marvelous fellowship. It had to shift for himself. He become a wanderer, tossed with every wind of doctrine, carried away. That's the way he stands today, out of fellowship, out of harmony, away from God, shifting for himself. He creates something in his mind that he believes that God was. I used to talk to the people of the God of their own imagination. They don't have a God of the word. Hallelujah. They think have an idea what God is. God is a, a cross. God is a Jesus on a cross. God is a this. God is a that. God is because the man, I believe God in that, that man there and I'm in the right place and the right church and they tie up God with that man and they tie up God with a church and they tie up God with a doctrine. God is not into that. God is the word. Oh, give the Lord some praises. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why they could never understand Jesus come and say, you're a hypocrite. You st- talk about these Pharisees and them. Blast them. And them had the long gun and the long priests, long hat, tall hats, and long guns and well embroidered garments. And Jesus blasting them. They couldn't handle him, you know. He was too much. When he hit the church, so, and he take a stretch up and said, beat them out. Of the, he said, My house shall be called a house of prayer. They couldn't handle him. He was just like a dangerous, rugged man. He said, The kingdom of God is at hand. Them guys know nothing about their kingdom. He said, You have not seen his voice. You have not seen him or heard his voice. But I see him. I heard his voice. Oh, glory to God. I am his witness. When you see me, you see the Father. He rocked them with that. Oh, give the Lord a shout. He said, Abraham saw my day and was glad. Talk about you and Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, I am. But that, that knocked them all cold. That was in the court before Abraham was, I am. Oh, give the Lord a shout. And Jesus said, at that day, you shall know. I am in the Father, you in me and I in you. At that, that day is coming. When you're going to come from partial realization into perfect realization. When you're going to know who you are. You know where you come from. And you know where you're going. Oh, give the Lord a shout. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. This gospel come to bring us to spiritual maturity. Christian maturity. To be mature sons and daughters of God. That can handle God's business. Oh, give the Lord a shout. Must be about my father's business. We have some sons to go after. We have people lost in this message. We're going to go get them. Oh, hallelujah. This message, this message, this work ain't over yet. Oh, give the Lord a shout. Before this, go to the eternal loss. There are some lost people in some groups. We're going to go get them. Go get them, pride. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Abraham ain't going nowhere until Lot come out. Lot had to come out. If there's 50, if there is 40, if there's 25. God will not let the righteous perish with the wicked. Wicked Sodomites. Wicked sinners, some in Sodom. Hallelujah. Lost, lost, lost his way down there. Lost his son in law, daughter in law. He lost people down there. And he coming out, coming out. He come to come out. Wife and all couldn't make it. Because something was in his heart. Not her head, you know. Not the head. The head say go. The head say keep on walking. The head say don't look back. But the heart is what move her back there. One more look at how short the dress is. Hello. One more look at the lipstick at the earring. And all the tattoo. And all. One more look to see what she was leaving. Instead of throwing some dynamite behind and blow up behind you. Don't even look back. We have to do that, you know. Throw the dynamite and just blow up behind you. Blow the bridge behind you. Devil likes you to have bridge, you know. Keeping this in case he needs a cross map. Forget that. God can get you a new bridge. God can get you a new plan altogether. Blow up what's behind you. Man shifting for himself, out of fellowship, out of harmony, away from God. So what we are saying tonight, Adam and Eve was in perfect harmony because they were in the word. When sin came, that's when the quarrel started. He said it changed their spirit. It break the fellowship between them, with God, and with each other. So if the fellowship with God is restored, we're going to have to with each other. 
Do you see it now? When Adam and Eve fell, it broke their relationship with God. A broken relationship with God means broken relationship with each other. So the first thing God has to do was to make us to get back a connection because when you dial, no dial tone, line cut. Sin cut the line. What Jesus did by dying on the cross was to bring back a new line through the blood. So now we have dial tone and give you a choice to call and to respond. He's not calling. He, he put the call already. He done already call. You have to respond to the call. And once you could call him, you could call each other. Once you have a fellowship and connection with him, you can connect with each other. If you, have, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. So what would make a man not want to fellowship or not? There's no word for that, you know. It starts with P. It's called pride. People don't want to humble themselves. But pride is a, a dangerous, a deadly, a wicked, evil thing. Because that is what Lucifer got in the beginning. He said, I will arise. I and I, not, no, I. And when the I man hit him so, he get hit down with I. He got the boots and he got kicked out. Pride is a deadly thing, you know. Nicodemus was coming by night, you know. Because he didn't want to be seen any day. Pride. But when that man daughter was dying, and he had bother with anybody else, you know. He know Jesus on a different road altogether. He said, oh, my master, master, my daughter. Somebody said, don't even bother to ask him. She's dead now. She has died. No, she's dead. And Jesus turned and says, you see, what, what is he in? Different realm. He said, I go wake her. When Lazarus died, what did Jesus say? I'm glad for my sake I was not there. He knew what he was going to do. He's in the spirit. Are you in the spirit? Let's wrap up. Mission, come up, please. Brother Brown. Woo. I was quoting something ago in one of the services, a little boy that I knew of in a certain city. He was climbing around in the attic. He found a little old attic, a garret, old trunk, digging into the trunk. He found a little yellow post-it stamp. It was like yellow from age. He taken it over to the stamp collecting friend, and he said, how much will you give me for this stamp? He was expecting five or ten cents and perhaps an ice cream cone in his mind. He looked it over the collector. He knew it was valuable stamp. He said, I'll give you a dollar bill for it. That was a good quick sale for the little lad. He collected a dollar, the stamp collection, taking the stamp. Down the street, he went for ice cream. The stamp collector began to work on the stamp. A few weeks later, he sold it for $500. Then a little after that, it was sold for $3,000. And they say it's worth a quarter of a million dollars. You see, it wasn't the little yellow paper. Because you wouldn't even have picked it up if it was on the street. But what made it so valuable was what was root on that little yellow paper. And that's the way it is tonight. It's just a piece of paper. Not very valuable paper, but it's what's root on it have so much value because it is the word of God and heaven it will pass away but that word will never pass away a man is just as good as his word you are just as good as your word I am just as good as my word if I can't take your word I want no dealings with you I want you to be the same to me and we must be the same to God if he can't keep his word then I want to know who is God that can keep his word so he said have faith in God Feet is a common thing, like weeds, like, like hyssop. You try to press it out, make it something that no one can take a hold of. It's so simple. But Abraham, God humbles himself. God is humility. What's what Abraham said? The first sign of the Holy Ghost. First, not second, not third, not fourth. The first sign of the Holy Ghost is humility. Somebody who's willing to humble himself. Somebody willing to say, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. The man that can humble himself is on his road up. He that exalts himself is on the road down. That goes for pastor, elder, deacon, regardless of who it is. You see somebody proud and arrogant, they're on the way down. Regardless of what status they have, they can have the best swimming pool, house, land, car, plane, whatever, they're on the way down. The one who's humbling themselves, they're on the way up. 
We must remember that Christianity is not pushing ahead, trying to get ahead of this fellow, but stepping back, taking the back seat. Let the other fellow go. Humble yourself. If they sue you at the court, take your coat, give him the cloak also. If they compel you to go a mile, go two. Smash your one cheek to the other. He was our example in every way that we should be. Or the Branham. He decided it took blood. Adam and Eve tried to make a fig leaf apron. It wouldn't do. It required blood. And he said, now watch. And he will never change. He never changes. And when it come a time a person was sick and wanted to be healed by God, God healed them on the same basis in faith. I'm almost done. And any word that God says, here we go, it can never change. Now that's the reason I believe the Bible is just the way it's written. It can never be changed. We can't find nothing better. God cannot. He's infinite. We are finite. We make mistakes and tomorrow we know that we know today. More, more than we know today. But not God. He's eternal, infinite, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He is God. If he isn't those things, then he isn't God. He's finite like we are. So we must remember he is God. His words are and that's part of him. You've heard me say every man is good at his word. God is no better than his word. So in the beginning was the word. Word was with God. And the word was God. Last quote. Brother Branham. You see, the attribute sons of his spirit have not yet entered into the word form body. The difference between him and you as a son. He was at the beginning the word and in Morphe body. He came in and lived in that, in the person of Melchizedek. Then later we never heard no more of Melchizedek because he became Jesus Christ. Melchizedek was a priest, but he became Jesus Christ. Now you bypass that. Because in that form, he knowed all things. But you have never been able to know that yet. You come like Adam. Like me. You became from attribute to flesh to be tempted. But when this life is finished here, if this earthly tabernacle can be dissolved, we have one already waiting. That is where we go. That is the word. Then we can look back and see what we have done. Now we don't understand it. We have never become the word. We just become flesh man. Not the word. But look, clearly it makes it clear. You will never be the word unless you were the thought at the beginning. That proves the predestination of God. You can't be the word unless you were a thought. You have to be in his thinking. So if you have to believe tonight that you are part of this bright body, you have to believe you are part of God's thinking. That is why you connect with this word. You see, in order to stand temptation, you have to bypass the theophany. You have to come down here in flesh to be tempted by sin. Oh, glory to God. You bypass the theophany and become a flesh man to be tempted by sin. Oh, glory to God. It, hallelujah. But when this body received the spirit of God, the immortal, immortal life inside of you, it chose this body in subjection. Hallelujah, hallelujah, there you are. It shows your body's objection. You don't have to say, if I could quit drinking, if I could quit this, just get into Christ and it's gone because your body is subject to that spirit. Let's all stand and give God praise to God. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson street. He was. But Anthony, may the Lord bless you tonight and keep you. May the grace of God go with you. God bless you. Oh, Jesus, pray, oh, and all to him I owe, sin had left crimson stain, he Just as I am without one plea, 
But that and I will love was shared for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am thy love unknown Hath broken every barrier down Not to be thine, yea, thine alone And praise right now in your own way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. I come unto thee, Lord. Thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be, oh, the God of Israel. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Glory to your name. Appreciate the Lord tonight. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You appreciate the word of God tonight. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. Amen. As the brothers get ready to bring their tithes and your offering. Oh, hallelujah. Make me more. Sing that song. Like thee. Jesus may be more like thee and give me a heart that is filled with your love oh, and me. Almighty God, we thank you for your word of, of promise. Thank you for your word of our lives, O oh God, Father. And we thank you for the spirit of God that we feel in the building tonight. Lord, we are privileged to be called the sons of God. And we thank you for your presence. Lord, as we pause now to pick up your time to your offering, we pray a blessed and use it for the fruit of every gospel. Bless your people as they give. Bless the ministry, Lord, Father, as you continue in your grace, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Oh, be more like thee. Oh, Jesus, make me more like thee. Yes, Lord. Jesus, make me more. Give me a heart that is filled with love and me. That is 
fill with your love. Oh, and may be more like thee. Oh, one more time. Oh, with all your heart. Make me more like thee. Oh, Jesus, make me more like thee. Oh, Lord, give me a heart that is filled with your love. And make me more like thee. Oh, give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Let's just bow our heads now. Amen. As we want to pray, close out in a word of prayer. We appreciate the Lord tonight. We appreciate the word of God. Amen, amen. Amen. A title deed of redemption given to make sons and daughters again. Amen. What a message from God. Let's just bow our heads as we, as we close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the message tonight, Lord. We thank you for your servant. Lord, our pastor here, brother Theo Ovid, who came and ministered this word out to us tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, what can we say tonight, Father? Lord, we see what you are calling us to, O oh God. You're calling us on a higher level, O oh God, Father. Lord, you're asking us to be more sincere, Lord, Father. Lord, you're asking us to surrender ourselves, Lord, and to humble ourselves, Lord, Father. Lord, that you could use us. Lord, that you could break us and mold us, Father. That you could form us into your word image, O oh God, Father. For that is what is required in this last day, Lord. And truly, Lord, we see that it's a life, Lord. A life is required, O oh God, Father, of us to be lived, Lord. And just like your prophet said unto us, that we ought to live our sermons, Lord. So, Father, we just thank you for your word tonight, Lord. We thank you for your servant, Lord. And we pray you bless him tonight, Lord. We pray your anointing be upon him, Lord, in a, super, a special, supernatural way, Father. And bless him, Lord, Father, Lord, uh, as, he, as he yields himself, Lord. Lord, to be a ministry, O oh God, Father. Lord, to those here and abroad. Lord, and wherever you would send him, O oh God, may your spirit build him tonight. Continue to open your word to him, Father. Lord, that we could be the benefactors of it. Lord God, we pray a blessed people here tonight that have heard the word of God. Lord, we pray that it take root in our hearts, Lord. And Lord, may we just not hear it, Lord, but may we, be, may we become doers also. That, Lord, if we truly believe that, that uh, uh, in the blood of Jesus Christ, that it ought to give us fellowship one with another. Lord, we want to live in the light, Lord, not in darkness, Father. Help us to walk in that light. Help us to walk in love. Help us to walk in fellowship with you and with each other, pleasing the Lord as we go, Lord, and flowing out to others, Lord Father. Grant it, Almighty God. Bless your people tonight as we leave. Bless each one that was hooked up on the internet, maybe you also hearing us out there in internet land. We pray a spirit to be with them also, Father. Wherever this recording would go, we pray a Holy Spirit to be with them, Father, and minister and continue to minister, Lord, to our hearts and bring us closer to you, Lord Jesus. We pray a blessed remainder this week, Lord Father. Pray your Holy Spirit overshadow each one of us. Lord, and may it keep us, Lord Father, and empower us with your blessed Holy Spirit until the time that we will meet again in your presence. We pray and ask these things through the precious Son of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's all have our seats now. We're dismissed. Amen. It's certainly a pleasure to be here. Praise God. Give me a key for that song all the way as we leave. Amen. Praise God. So not forgetting, um, on Friday, I believe we'll have a prayer and fast. Um, and then the Zoom prayer meeting on, on the, in the evening time. So we're looking forward for that by the grace of God. Amen. We could join in on the prayer and fast if you can. It's really a privilege to be able to do.
do these things to the Lord and uh, to come to God in prayer and to release our burdens and to give over the things that we can't control. We can't do it for ourselves, but we humble ourselves before God. Say, God, I can't do it no more. You do it. You take it. And you do something beautiful with it. Amen. I feel like that's what prayer is and such a privilege to be able to do that. So by the grace of God, we want to have our prayer and fast on Friday. So you be on expectation. Stay in the spirit. And we'll all convene at 8 on Zoom by the grace of God. Amen. And then on Sunday, we'll have our service at 10 a.m. Come under expectation. Amen. So God wish you, bless you. May God bless the rest of your week. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, the way I'm going all the way. Don't you know I'm going all the way with the Lord? Oh, Lord. I made my decision and I'm going all the way. Oh, I made my choice and I'm going all the way. I have drawn.